On today's episode, what advanced airliners, air refueling tankers, and the big beautiful bill all have in common. Today's episode is brought to you by engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on engineering.com TV today. In the relatively new branch of mathematics called chaos theory, there's a concept called sensitive dependence on initial conditions. For most of us, it's known as the butterfly effect, the notion that the flapping wings of a butterfly somewhere can trigger a chain of events that could create a tornado someplace else. Now, it's visible everywhere and in everything from biology to economics. But it's also true in the aerospace industry and especially in the intersection between government economic policy and new technology. A small thing can create a revolution in industry. A better metal alloy or a kickoff order from a forward-thinking customer all can create a revolution. Aviation, however, has long been constrained by money or more accurately, risk. It's common for even large airframe makers to literally bet the company on a new airliner. And in any world where program success is literally existential, risk management is a number one priority. A big launch order from an airline or two helps, and so do advanced engineering tools like simulation software. But one of the major reasons why we can all climb into a jet airliner today is because of government, or more specifically, the US Air Force. Commercial jets had a troubled early history pioneered by the British with the de Havilland Comet, an aircraft which suffered from structural failures, but more importantly, marginal economics. The best way to get seat mile costs down is to add more seats, which means bigger aircraft with more powerful engines and, of course, a major engineering program to develop them. Turbojet engine technology was advancing rapidly in the 50s thanks to military contracts, and Boeing had an early jet transport prototype, but the key kickoff customer to generate the cash flow needed to develop that expensive production line was an Air Force contract for the KC-135, a jet-powered aerial refueling tanker, the technology of which conveniently transferred into the civilian Boeing 707. The rest was history. The European aerospace industry has always been subsidy-driven, but government handouts for large aerospace corporations have never been favorable to U.S. politics. And as a result, those subsidies have frequently come in the form of Air Force contracts. Which brings us to today. Long Beach, California-based Jet Zero has developed an innovative blended wing-body airliner concept targeted at the lucrative mid-market 250-seat segment. And in 2023, the U.S. Air Force granted the company a $235 million contract, leading to a projected first flight of a full-scale demonstrator by 2027. Now, that's a lot of money, but not excessive by the standards of the industry. And the company expects that it will take just under $5 billion in total to get the program into production at a manufacturing plant in North Carolina, coincidentally generating some 14,000 jobs. There is also interest from major airlines who would love the lower fuel burn that advanced airframe technology promises. But ominously, the Air Force plans to cut $14 million in fiscal 2026 from the program, which represents about a one-third cut, right at the time when the company is preparing to cut metal for the full-scale demonstrator. Why cut a program which many believe is the future of the industry? Well, this cut, along with the retirement of the A-10 fleet, are intended to redirect funding toward other priorities, which is widely assumed to mean the Golden Dome missile defense program. Jet Zero have announced that they will seek private funding to fill in the shortfall, but it remains to be seen whether the company will in fact fly an aircraft in 2027 with these cuts. I hope so, because civil aviation is running out of ways to extract more efficiency out of large turbofan engines, and tweaks to conventional airframe designs are rapidly reaching the point of diminishing returns. The blended wing body could be the future, and the USAF will need its capability going forward, if the shiny, flashy object that is Golden Dome doesn't get in the way. Well, that's it for today's episode of End of the Line, brought to you by Engineering.com. For our deeper engineering series, visit Engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, Designing the Future, and the Engineering Roundtable, not found on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.